What's going on? You're hanging out with Phil Cross and we're doing it, man. The show goes on, COVID-19 edition, where we get the opportunity to connect with superstars and entertainment professionals and how they're navigating COVID-19. Today, we're kicking it with our a good friend of mine. Uh, he's a great guy, Dave Pensato, uh, Grammy Award-winning mix engineer. He began his career in Atlanta, moved to Los Angeles. If you're in LA, in the music scene, you can find him in Larrabee Studios in LA or Echo Bar in North Hollywood. His weekly show, Pensado's Place, which is on YouTube, make sure you go ahead and check that out. It's all about engineering techniques, interviewing guest mixers, producers, or other mega superstar artists on some of his episodes as well, too. He's got a lot of credits as a music producer and uh, award-winning mix engineer. Christina Aguilera, Beyonce, Kelly Clarkson, Mariah Carey, The Pussycat Dolls, Mary J. Blige, uh, I mean, like Pink, his his list of superstars is one of these that just goes on and on and on. I mean, Sting, Elton John, LL Cool J, The Black Eyed Peas, uh, Wyclef, Shakira, Brian McKnight, Usher, Seal, Will Smith, Justin Timberlake. It's just one of those that goes on and on and on. And uh, Dave, are, are you there, man? Are you ready to do this thing? I'm here. Uh, I don't know if my head can fit in this little small screen now, but uh, I'm here for sure. Man, okay. amigo, so good to see you. So good to see hey, you. Hey, man, great. Listen, great to see you. First off, thank you for coming on the show. And I'll tell you, you are one of the most humble guys in the industry for having an incredible amount of success. So, I mean, I think your head fits in here perfect. And if it doesn't, that's okay, too. You deserve it, baby. You're the godfather. Not really. I mean, um, I didn't do anything special to be here. I just, music is, um, music is all I know. It's a beautiful thing, and that's why we're connecting with guys like you that know music, that are that are very well connected in the industry, and and to just to all people in all parts of life. I didn't send you these questions because I wanted a natural reaction. This is like uh, to catch a predator, or is this is this what we got going on here? I, I mean, listen, I don't think they're that bad, but they're but you okay. but you're gonna be okay. I think you're gonna make it through these. All right, I'm not I'm not gonna come at you too hard today. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna make everything up anyway. You know. Okay, okay, I'm with that. Is COVID-19 a natural phenomenon? Is it, two, a military bioweapon? Or is it, three, a conspiracy that was accidentally or purposely released by a secret society? A lot of people are saying all these different things. What do you think? As we progressed into this pandemic, um, I, would, I wouldn't be truthful if I didn't say at some point in time, I probably thought one of all, all of the three as possibilities. I tend to not be a conspiracy theorist and I tend to not believe that the military is smart enough to do anything like that. And I, I tend to believe that mother nature knows what she's doing. Uh, but having said all that, um, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm more concerned about the people like the, like the nurses and the doctors that, that no matter what the cause is, they're dying trying to save us. I think we need to give a little bit of respect to the people that take care of us when we're sick and go to the hospital. I'd hate to be the guy that was recklessly going out and, and I got the virus and then one of those nurses was taking care of me and she got it from me and died. I just don't want to be that person. So uh, I have opinions, and uh, but my opinions are kind of kind of a little bit like Damon Sharp when he was on the first episode, which by the way, great, great job with him. Oh, thanks. He's a great guy. Thank you. I have to say that I can't find the factual information to prove one of those three outright. And uh, I sure hope that this thing gets over really fast, you know. If you had to lean on one, would you, would you, would you say well, more of a natural phenomenon? The natural phenomenon makes the most scientific sense to me. I, 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 because my father, uh, I have a good science background and, and uh, it's possible to tell if a, if a virus has been doctored artificially in a laboratory. And uh, that's a fact. And um, so that doesn't seem to be happening, but you just never know. So a lot of creators are heavily in the industry relying on traveling and collaborating in person in the room. You know that, man, as, as somebody that makes music. As a creator, how is, how is this affecting your workflow and how are you overcoming COVID-19? Uh, man, early on, I had no flow. I couldn't focus. I stayed in bed. Um, every word about the virus I read, every TV show I watched, every documentary I watched. And I, I, I ended up getting myself so overtaken by the noise, I couldn't hear the music anymore. Ooh, I like the way you said that. The only reason I'm here is, is the music. And, and uh, I'm blessed, like I said, I come from a musical family and I've been a musician since birth. 
and all of a sudden th there was no music and kind of went in a tailspin and uh Nico Hamui, my assistant and uh Jackson Rao brought some gear over from my studio set up in my house and when I saw my speakers come back in the room I started feeling better you know <laughs> uh, I know that sounds corny and I know oh. it's, it's in my DNA and and when I couldn't do and, and be who, who I thought I was um it, 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 it was really horrible with all that being said how could creators support each other better how do you think we can help each other more? As a society, I, I think we've come to underestimate the value of, of even an, an up and coming musician, an independent artist, an artist that doesn't have the support of a label. Um, and I think that as a, as a culture, we, we, we owe that to the creative people in all the different genres, not just music, but painting and, and the other creative arts. And then, for me personally, uh, one of the things that got me through all this and is still getting me through it is reaching out to friends I haven't talked to in a while. In fact, I was, I was real close to calling you. Uh, you should have, man. We're family for life. <laughs> true, true. I think that's all really good stuff. For, for people that are at home, in their room, quarantined in, they can't leave, and they're freaking out, do you have any advice for those guys? I don't know that I'm qualified to give you advice, but I can give you an opinion and, and you can convert that opinion to advice. And I think, a, I think a smart man gets the opinion of many people and then converts that to advice. Uh, I would start with being aware, being concerned and, and having a technique and a method where you can stay up to date on information but not so much that it takes over your life and, 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 and creates so much noise that, that your brain is just, is just short-circuiting all the time. All of us have said at one moment in time, including myself, man, I wish I had time to, and then fill in the blank. Well, we got time now to fill in the blank. And so, you know, I'm organizing my hard drives because I, I, I generate uh, Three to, three to ten gigs a day mixing, you know, wow, and that's man. a lot of storage. We're going to have to store it three, three places. I think to be creative, you have to learn to take your pain and learn how to play with it. And uh, so I'm working through that element of creativity. Um, you've always been a person that helped a lot of people. And if you want to get a friend, you have to be a friend. If you want to get something material, you've got to give something material. If your hand is this tight, you can't receive anything, but if you open your hand up to give something, you can receive something. That's the Quincy Jones told me that. Uh, the best way to get your mind in shape is to help somebody else and, 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 and give some value to this that we're going through. One day it's gonna be over. One day it's gonna be over. Hopefully it'll be over sooner than later. So reach out, stay in touch with people, get your health together. Get, get your get your life together. Get caught up on things. All all, all of that stuff is great. A, a little side note uh, for for the music heads out there. You, you mentioned speakers, right? I'm I love I'm a Jenna like guy. What are Dave Pensado's favorite speakers? I used NS10s. Okay. Uh, when, uh, I'm from Florida, but I started my career in Atlanta, and uh, I I started my career as a, a guitar player touring. I, I I played on on a lot of records you might know and recognize as as a kid and. At a very young age, 13, 14, I was touring already. My mother would talk guitar, so I cheated and got good at a young age. In my 30s, I became an, an engineer uh, accidentally. A real famous artist who'd already had a bunch of number one records was on the studio, so I learned to engineer from a songwriter and an artist. And uh, he got the, the first pair of NS10s that came into the South. And so I've been using NS10s for ever and forever and forever and about 10 years ago jason joshua my dear friend said man if you want to make modern records you need to start using modern tools so um now i'm using um a, a variety of near fields but uh, a guy named dave mallet at pro audio design now makes Asperger's based on a lot of the original designs but he's also elevated and taken them to a whole new level and those are my go-to speakers now. I've had those for about five years, but I started out on Asperger's. 
hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's like starting out with the with the with the with the Ferrari, right? I mean, that's those are the big boys, right? I yeah. Mean, yeah, I was blessed. I'm gonna turn the tables on you real quick. How things at the at the Z, man? I'm doing my shows from home. So instead of being in a in a in a multi million dollar studio in, in Tribeca playing radio, I got my Genelex and I got my brand new Apollo uh, console. So I, which which I, uh, I I make music on it, but it actually works out. It doubles. I can use it for radio too. Uh, before it leaves my condo, before it hits the top of the Empire State Building and Sirius XM and, and iHeart Radio, I got I got my voice pumped up a little bit, man, with the, with the plugins on there. You know what I mean? So I'm uh, you know, that way I can sound a little a little extra extra. Pensado's uh, place. That's where people can go and check you out on YouTube. Can yeah. you can you can you tell yeah. people a little bit about Pensado's place? Well, Pensado's place was started by Herb Trowick and myself. And uh, Herb is a, a brilliant, brilliant man. Uh, for most of my career, almost all of my career in LA, he was my manager and did an incredible job. Uh, I wanted to, to think about sharing a way to share information with people. And Herb came up with the idea of doing it on the internet and, and, it, and it grew from there, the idea. And um, the very first show we did, we had like 20,000 streams in like 10 days. And I'm like, who are these people, you know? Uh, it's called Pensada's Place, and the, the, the web address is, is Pensada's Place. Instead of .com, it's .tv. We're currently trying to get a, a really good, qualified uh, New York DJ on the show. Do you have hey, any man. ideas? Hey, man. I would be honored to be on that show, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Well, thanks for coming on the show, Dave. I, I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure, my friend. Take care of yourself. We need you. Thank you.